coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Child of God, seek to know the Word of God. Seek to get a revelation for yourself. A revelation may not feed your senses. They may not feed your sight, your touch, your smell, but they will touch your inner man. And they will touch you in the place it matters most. And they will touch you in a place where a false minister can get to you if a revelation got there first. Glory be to God. Again and welcome to Fresh Tea. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Tea. Today on Fresh Tea, we continue our message series, Discernment for the Last Days, and this is part 17 of that message series, part 17. Now, this message is being taken in three major categories. The first section is recognizing a balanced gospel, and that was from part 1 to 10. Then we stepped into recognizing a false minister, and that's where we're at now. And after that, we'll conclude with recognizing a good shepherd, discernment for the last days. So we asked the question, where do false ministers come from? Then we said, what is the manifesto of false ministers? We began to look at details of the manifesto and the timing of the manifesto, and we said it's now, it's urgent. Then we're looking at the question, what is the modus operandi of false ministers. Modus operandi is a particular way or method of doing something, the way in which something operates or works. In the Latin, it literally means the way of speaking. So what is the modus operandi? Or you could say, what are the characteristics? That's probably a simpler way to put it, of false ministers. We said, number one, they propagate falsehood. Number two, they pervert the truth. And that's where we're at now. They pervert the truth, they preach the truth side by side, with just a little bit of error in the same breath. Little foxes that spoil the vine, little leaven that leavens the whole lump. So continuing with they pervert the truth. We said to pervert means to distort or corrupt the original course, meaning or state of something. To lead someone away from what is considered natural or acceptable. You know, when you talk about somebody being a pervert, there's someone whose sexual behavior is regarded as abnormal and, accept and unacceptable. So to provide the truth presupposes that you're doing something you know is not the truth, but you're deliberately corrupting it for some other reasons um, best known to yourself. So Acts 13, excuse me, Acts 13, verse uh, 12, verse 6 to 12, but I won't read the whole story, just verse 9. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of all deceit and fraud, you son of the, de the devil, talking about Bar Jesus, son of the, the, the false prophet, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting 
the straight ways of the Lord, perverting the straight ways of the Lord. So to pervert in the Greek means to distort, to misinterpret, or to morally corrupt or turn away. So the, these false preachers, they pervert the truth, they corrupt the word of God. They corrupt the word of God. To corrupt the word of God means to, to contaminate or infect. Think about it like you're infected with a disease or infected with a virus or infected with something that is eating away at your body. To infect or contaminate the word of God. False teachers corrupt the word of God. Some examples of some corruption. And you know, some of these examples I'm gonna give you are everyday examples, day-to-day -day simple examples. But we, we have, some of us believers have taken those things as normal. There's level kind of corruption that can come into you. And just like we said earlier, it's a you know, simple process and it's just a little living and it corrupts the whole lump. Little foxes that are able to spoil the vine. A lot of believers who are born again, tongue-talking, Bible-reading, devil-chasing believers have a very warped view on sex before marriage. I'll say it again. Some of you who are watching, you're a believer. You go to big-name Bible churches, small-name Bible churches. Bible says in Hebrews 13, for marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. Bed, that word bed is the word koite. It's from there you get the word koitos. Coitus is sexual intercourse. Marriage is honorable and sexual intercourse is undefiled in marriage. So it means outside of marriage, sexual intercourse in any form is defiled. Why is it so rampant among believers? Some people even now, the corruption has come to the point where it's legalized to look like if we're already in a, a relationship. The church is aware, is the church aware you're having sex? The church is aware we are about to get married. Or they take it even closer. We have done our traditional marriage. And because we've done our traditional marriage, they gave her to me. So I took her. Then what are you bringing her to the altar for? What if there are already three of you who are coming to the altar to be joined? She may have been impregnated from the day you took her. My point is this. It is, some people say things like, I need to test. I don't want to be left in a marriage that is not interesting sexually. I need to test him or test her. Let us at least test once or twice. Then we're sure it can work. Then we can put it on hold again. Marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the living God? You are bought with a price. Marriage is honorable and coitus is undefiled. And it has gotten to the point now where some pastors cannot speak about it anymore from the pulpit. You cannot talk as plainly about sex as I'm talking about it from the pulpit. Why? Partly because you are indulging in it as well. You're a man of God, you're preaching the gospel, but you're touching the choir girls. You're touching their breasts. You're bringing them to your office and doing things. That is not gospel. That is, I won't even talk about whether it's balanced or imbalanced. It's not even gospel. It's not Bible. It's either we are reading the Bible, living the Bible, studying the word of God, and practicing the word of God in all righteousness and purity, or we're not. And no matter how funky you get and how sophisticated you get, I'm a word church, I wear trousers, I put on makeup, I paint my nails, you keep your legs closed. Because marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. That's a simple practice. Just like I'm going to give you some practical examples today. Simple, practical example of how the word of God has been corrupted in some areas. But glory be to God, there are many people who are standing as virgins at 45, standing and saying, no, I will wait. I will wait. I will wait for marriage, for it is marriage that gives legality to sex. Glory be to God. That's one example. Another example, I've spent quite a bit of time on that, but I know a lot of you have been delivered and set free. Some of these things need to be talked about. You can't be a believer I don't want to even go into adultery because we're talking about corrupted things here. This is, if that is totally corrupted as well in some areas. But why I, I focused on this is young people, people about to get married, who justify. The people, you actually get laughed at by your peers when you tell them you haven't had sex with the person you're about to get married. What does the Bible say? What does Jesus teach? What is the pure, uncorrupted gospel? You will listen to people who are false ministers and false teachers 
who all they do is corrupt the word of God, a little living, and you don't realize when you've been totally taken over and corrupted. And then you come the next day after that fornication and lift up holy hands in church and um, worshiping God. Yes, your hands are holy. You've asked God to forgive you. And they are holy and pure. But you should recognize that that is a corrupted practice and it should not be done anymore. Or different, let's, let's leave the area of sex. Let's go into the area of prayer. Sometimes you pray and you get caught up in the spirit. Recently, you know, I was with, with you know, my daughter and we were, pray, we were worshiping God and all that. And the spirit of laughter just came upon us. And we began to laugh and roll on the floor. And she was rolling on the floor and I was really cracking up on the floor. And then God was doing some awesome healings and things were taking place and giving direction in that atmosphere. Now, how about every single day after that? Each time I want to worship, I want to pray, I start laughing. Oh, there goes mom again. She's praying. Something is definitely wrong. You're not going to laugh. The spirit of laughter will not come upon you every single time. There are times you'll be in intense prayer and it's pretty much emotionless. If you're going by your feelings, you feel dry. You know what I'm talking about. You feel like you're not really praying. God is a spirit. God is spirit. And they that worship him, relate with him, communicate with him, do so in spirit and in truth. There's really no guarantee of what your feelings will tell you or not tell you when you're praying. There's no guarantee. Sometimes you have a kind of lovely emotional experience as well where you're laughing. Some other times you begin to groan. There are times when you're praying in other tongues, it's almost like you can't, you can't fully let out what's happening on the inside of you. You just begin to, it, it kind of like overwhelms your temple. But you don't do that every day. And you don't now make a doctrine out of groaning. And there are such corruptions. If you don't groan, you are not praying. If you don't groan, you are not reaching the heavens. Where is that written in the word of God? I'm showing you how in these last days, you must walk with discernment to stay in the straight and narrow path of what the balance and what the true gospel is. Glory be to God. This can be corrupted. And you know, you get into things and before you know it, people are groaning and fighting and you know, boxing devils and things like that. Where did that come from? It may have been an experience that happened once. As the spirit wills, he will visit you. God will visit you in different situations. As the spirit wills, not as you will or as you corrupt or as you make a doctrine of. Second Corinthians 10, 4 to four to six, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, for casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You know, when you talk about, I don't, this is not a teaching on spiritual warfare, I'm just touching different areas where corruption has come into the mainstream body of Christ, mainstream Pentecostal church, mainstream, what, 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 what you understand by me, that these are the people who know the word. These are the Bible-believing churches. Are we all truly Bible-believing churches? What does the Bible say? Then we can believe when we find out what he says. When you look at the, you look at the issue of spiritual warfare in the word of God, it is more a, 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 a battle of the mind than it is a battle against the demons. It is, I'm not saying demons do not exist. I'm not saying you don't cast out demons. Oh, certainly you do. You look through the ministry of Jesus and the Acts of the Apostles. You definitely cast out demons. But a lot of this spiritual warfare, battling, you know, deliverance, go for rounds of deliverance, is lack of ignorance. And these things are being propagated by ministers who take advantage of the whole so-called deliverance ministry. And before you know it, the Bible is not being preached. It's been totally corrupted. The finished work of Jesus, you have been delivered from the powers of darkness. Past tense, you have been, you have been, you have been, you have already been delivered from the powers of darkness. Child of God watching me, you have been delivered. You are not looking to be delivered. You're not looking to be, to be, to be, to be set free by Jesus. He has set you free. Whom the Son has made free is free indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth is that you have been delivered. You don't need to take no chicken, take no onion, take no rope, take no sand to your village, have somebody dig up 
umbilical cords and rubbish around your village. You have been, you have been, you have been delivered. And for some believers, that's the only, I don't want to call it gospel. That's the only Christianity they know. It's a corrupted Christianity, corrupted by false teachers, corrupted by false prophets. Should I go on? Are you still my friend? More examples of corruption. A recent one that started happening is a story on tithing. I've chosen not to say much about that. Rather, I would teach on tithing. And you take what you want as the truth from the word of God. But I keep asking this question. People want to still call it the tithe. But they say you can give what you want. You don't give 10%. You're not mandated to. I'd like to see the person who believes that tithing is not for this dispensation, but that person pays 50% of their income to the church. I'd like to see the person who pays much more than what the tithe expects of you. You see, let me just say this about the tithe. The tithe is something you have to have by revelation. If you don't have it by revelation, you can't have it. The tithe is not something you pay in fear. The tithe is not something you pay in obedience because if you don't pay it, you will die. That is not true. The tithe is something you understand by revelation. And every single revelation God gives for you is to benefit you. The tithe begins to declare that you understand the owner-steward relationship. The tithe declares so many things that go beyond the actual money that you are putting away. But my point is this. In this time, in these last days when we should be discerning all kinds of... And you're shocked at the people who are just talking and flapping their gums about something as basic and fundamental as that without the word of God. Just out of feelings, emotions, going to the Old Testament, digging up things, turning them around. Corruption. Corruption. Corruption of revelations that God has given to us to empower us, to move us further into the blessing, into the experience of the blessing. And because you have not taken time to study the word of God and know the word of God and know it for yourself, this kind of corruption comes into the, into the life of a believer. These are the last days. This is the time when we should be discerning. So you can look and you can say, no, no, this is not what the word of God says. Every revelation I said from God has to be received as a revelation. Only then will the benefit and the blessings in the revelation be yours. You know, one day I was um, speaking with one of my daughters on something, and, and she, she, she needed to understand something. And, and I just didn't want to start explaining. So I said to her, you know what? You're, you're, you're young adults. Just ask God to give you revelation. Just ask him. If you ask him, God is more eager to teach you than you are to learn from him. She says, yeah, mom, that's right. So she prayed and we prayed together and asked the Holy Spirit to give her revelation in that area she was trying to get some understanding. Because you see, I could teach her and she could get it. But if she got it herself, she would keep it. And do you know, the it doesn't always happen that quickly, but the very next day, because she doesn't live with me anymore, she, where she lives, she went to church the next morning in, in the church where she attends, because out of, out of where I am. And this pastor spoke almost verbatim to her about you know, answering her question. And she called me from church. Yeah, Mom, I got the rev I've got it. She showed me a verse of scripture, which I'd never seen that thing in it before, so I shared in her revelation. But she got a revelation. Child of God, seek to know the word of God. Seek to get a revelation for yourself. A revelation may not feed your senses. They may not feed your sight, your touch, your smell, but they will touch your inner man. And they will touch you in the place it matters most. And they will touch you in a place where a false minister can get to you if a revelation got there first. Glory be to God. Ask and seek for revelation. What was Paul's prayer for the church? Ephesians 1.17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This is a prayer you should pray for yourself often. Colossians 1, 9 to 11 as well. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled. This is the solution, child of God. 
This is the, the defense you need. You may be filled with what? With the knowledge of his will, his word, his will. You can interchange those two words, his will, his word, his purpose, his plan. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Glory be to God. Why should a false minister come to tell you things that have corrupted the word of God, perverted the truth, just like Bar Jesus tried to do, turn you away from the revelation that the Father God has given to you, not because he needs anything from you, but because he wants to bless you. He wants you to experience the blessing. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 18 to all the way to 28, you read that, I won't read that. But verse 20 says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Thank you, Lord. Learn to ask for revelation. Learn to seek for revelation. Learn to rely on the Spirit of God to guide you and teach you. He is with you and he's taught you and you have an anointing from him to know what is truth and what is a lie. It's not hard for a believer to have discernment for the last days. It's just a decision the believer has to, be make, has to make in all sensitivity and know that now we must, we, we must walk in wisdom and revelation and spiritual understanding. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you because your people are seen even more clearly and making decisions to stay with the gospel, to stay with the gospel just as you wrote it, just that it survived all the years and years and years of, 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 of attacks and came out pure, complete, to stay with that same gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Sister, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He is knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? To surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we will be there for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew. 
which is 0700-3737-4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234-700-3737-4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life.